we can go over the 2020 sample exam questions. Um, wait, have most of you guys already done these? No. The sample question? Yeah. I know, but we can, yeah, I don't really care. To be fair, I haven't done any AP bio assignments <laughs> since like March. <laughs> <laughs> oh my that gosh. sounds about right. It'd be like okay. a, a okay, So, um, do you want me to go over? Because I have the answers. Like, I prepared the answers already, so if you, do you want me to- I literally to... never even learned an entire unit of AP Bio, and I'm scared. Oh my god, bro. No. <laughs> like, I never learned- Wait, which one? From the 2020 Something. sample question about mosquitoes. Oh the... my lord. You should read it. Wow. I'm on a document. Bruh. I don't have the full document. I don't know where it is. Okay. Oh, um... Oh, okay, so do you want me to just go over the answers or also go over the question? Go over the question, too? Yeah, I think the yeah, questions, both. yeah, because I doubt half of us have done yeah. that, so. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. I'll post the, I'll just post the link if anyone wants to, like, follow yeah. along. Thank you. Um, so, okay, so basically the question just talks about mosquitoes. Oh, yeah, the thing about the sample FRQ is, like, I don't really know why College Board releases or released this as an FRQ because like some of the questions are related to evolution. So um, I really don't know why College Board is making this a sample question. Like it's a horrible sample question because a lot of units are removed. The evolution units are all removed. So um, yeah, so basically it just talks about mosquitoes and basically um, it has like Perithroids resistance, like some uh, mosquitoes have perithroids resistance to the fact that um, there's a substitution in a sodium channel, which is phenylalanine substituted to leucine at amino acid position 1014. And so basically, it just says like scientists think that this is why there's a uh, resistance and that. And so basically, they give you two regions. One region has um, is one region has um, mosquitoes where a lot of insecticide are um, sprayed, and then you have region B where little insecticide is sprayed. So, I also give you um, a chart or a data table, and then it tells you about different uh, perithroid resistance between region A and region B, and then it basically used different types of erythroid insecticides and as you can see in region a there um one of the um, one section they sprayed with a uh, permethrin or whatever and then basically there's lower mortality and then to, uh, right now like i'm immediately thinking that there is that region a obviously has more um more resistance than b just because it has lower mortality and also had more insecticide usage. And so if you can see, and region B has a lot higher mortality rates, but as you can see from October, 2008 to June, 2010, there's a massive decrease in percent mortality, uh, which probably will correlate with some sort of increase um, like perithroid resistance in region B. And so, they also give you a data table, and it, region A has more homozygous for phenylalanine, which is the a substituted mutation that apparently gives erythroid resistance. And you can see region A, which had more spraying of insecticide, also has more um, flies homozygous for phenylalanine, which is the resistance. And you can see uh, region B has less less mos mosquitoes as I guess for phenylalanine but that there is a significant increase from 2008 to 2010 so more mosquitoes fully gained resistance there okay so um, so the first question says like describe the most likely cause of the amino acid substitution in sodium protein and so um, okay so basically um, Answer could be due to could be due to a mistake during replication of DNA. 
which a different nucleotide was placed. So um, is that if you put something like mRNA substitution or protein substitution, it might not be accepted because it isn't a permanent um, mutation uh, because it might be temporary for one protein to have one substitution. But since, uh, so you have to put DNA because DNA is the, because um, DNA is permanent. So it'll be there forever compared to protein where one, one or two proteins might have that um, mutation. Well, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have a question? Um. So let's say I say that it's just a mutation in the DNA, which which resulted in the uh, uh, um the resistance. Would that be something that gets me a point? Wait, uh, can you repeat it again? Um. I just have to say it's a mutation in the DNA, which caused um a uh what's it called a resistance against the uh the peripheroids so that would be okay right that would yeah, give me a you, point. yeah you should say something about how it's related to mutation in dna and not rna or proteins okay all right thank you yeah. um and okay um so part b says explain how the substitution of a single amino acid in the channel protein could cause peripheroid resistance in mos mosquitoes and so uh, I said, like, I think a possible answer could be single amino acid substitution can lead to a change in the binding site of where peripheroids bind, leading to an inability of peripheroids to bind to the sodium channel protein, which is crucial in mosquitoes. So substitution, you can say anything about how a substitution may affect the binding site of where peripheroids bind. Um, then. Uh, part C says identify the dependent variable in the experiment whose data are graphed in figure two. And so the dependent variable would be um, basically the percent mortality of mosquitoes in different regions due to the spraying of peripheroids. So, so yeah, so basically if you wrote anything about the mortality in mosquitoes, that would probably be correct based on figure two. He says identify the positive control in the experiment. So positive control is basically when you, um, it's basically a control where you know what will happen. To you. Okay. So you're doing usually then a test you cross. Will, you basically know what will happen to the control. Like you know what happens um, in a positive control, but you don't, you won't really know the results to a negative control. So that's the difference. And so in this case, the positive control um, says over here in figure two that um, a mosquito strain is, some mosquitoes were exposed to untreated filter paper. And so that's basically your um, positive control. It's the mosquitoes that were exposed to untreated filter paper. And so uh, part E says, like justify exposing some mosquitoes to untreated filter paper each time the experiment was performed. We want to say something about how crucial it is to have a control group performing an experiment. Having a control group, in this case, the untreated filter paper allows us to compare experimental results to the baseline. We need a control group to give significance to the experimental group, in this case, the mosquitoes that were treated with peripheroids. You basically just have to justify why it's important to have a control group. Um, it says, uh, num F, it says, based on the data in figure two, describe whether mosquitoes from region A or region B are more likely to exhibit greater evolutionary fitness if exposed to the peripheroids in their native environment. So as you can see, based on the data, um, Already had a question. Uh, uh, what is it? What would the negative control be in this? Um, um, I'm, I'm not um specifically sure because I think it really depends on your um experiment because I don't think this one really has a pos uh, sorry a negative control because it really depends on your experiments. So not all experiments have. A positive control or negative or some not all experiments have a negative or positive control it really depends on your experiment i think 
or correct me if I'm wrong. So I think in this experiment, there's only a positive control. There's not a negative control. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but um, if someone can correct me, um, yeah, but I'm, I think that's what I'm pretty sure that not all experiments have a negative or positive control, but they have to have like some sort of control. Ah, uh, okay, thank you. Um, so he says, based on the data in figure two, describe, oh wait, so actually we, we're in F, sorry. So based on the data, describe whether mosquitoes from region A or B are more likely to exhibit greater evolutionary fitness. Like um, this question, like it's not really relevant just because it's not, um, evolution was taken out of the test. But um, for the sake of it, we're just gonna answer it still. So uh, basically, I think it should be region A that exhibits greater evolutionary fitness because of the fact that region A has more um, earthward resistance. As you can see by the table that shows it's homozygous for phenylalanine. There are more mosquitoes homozygous for phenylalanine. So that means that region A should exhibit greater evolutionary fitness because mosquitoes in region A have already previously been exposed to pyrethroids, meaning that there is a selective pressure to favor the substitution of leucine to phenylalanine in sodium channels, leading to pyrethroid resistance. Since region B has not been exposed to pyrethroids yet, very few flies may have this mutation and a selective pressure for this substitution has not yet been put in place. Um, that's the answer I put, um, but yeah, I think, I think it, um, so if you said probably anything about region A, because um, of the fact that it has resistance perithroids, um, it should probably be correct. Change of susceptibility of mosquitoes from region B to each of the two insecticides over the two year period. Um, so I said that there was a significant change in region B, that there is a significant decrease in mosquito mortality rates over the course of the two-year period. And so if you look at the figure two, you can see that um, there's a significant decrease in percent mortality from around 95% um, to around 85% for the course of two years for region B. There's a significant shift, which is probably due to um, mosquitoes, um, some of the mosquitoes getting pyrethroid resistance. And okay, H, um, do you guys want me to go over H? Because um, this is, it's like Hardy Weinberg question, which isn't on AP Bio anymore. But do you want me to still go over it anyways and calculate the frequency? No. No. Okay, then I'll skip it. Um, Okay, and then I just says using mosquitoes from insecticide free areas, the scientists develop mosquito strains with amino acid substitutions, other positions. And so the key thing is that they're um, non perithroid insecticides. So it says predict the susceptibility of mosquitoes to the insecticides. Um, and so basically, since they're non perithroid and the perithroid resistance was to the sodium ion channel substitution, um, since on perithroid um, insecticides would probably bind a different protein or maybe to a different different place. So most likely the mosquito strains with amino acid substitutions at their positions in the sodium channel protein will not have any effect on the mosquitoes exposed to non perithroid insecticides. Basically, having um, that mutation should not basically will not lead to a decrease in mortality rate because um, you still are exposing them to on perithroid insecticides when they have a mutation that is um, needed in perithroid insecticides. It um, confers resistance to perithroid insecticides. So basically, um, on perithroid insecticides will most likely not target the same protein compared to perithroid insecticides. So therefore, the mutation will not have any effect on non-perithroid resistance. We'll still have similar mortality rates compared to mosquitoes without sodium channel protein mutations. And uh, last one, J, is based on data in Table 1 and the information provided provide evidence to support the 
um, scientists claim. So I just wrote the claim is true because there's a significant decrease in mortality rate for mosquitoes in region B over the course of two years. So most likely, um, natural selection usually does not happen in just two years. And that's how you know that it's probably due to some sort of immigration. Because mostly, most of natural selection does not evolve that fast. So that's why in two years, it seems kind of quick for a lot of the mosquitoes to already have resistance and so most likely this will be due to immigration of resistance mosquitoes since natural selection most likely will not allow mosquitoes to adapt so quickly um so yeah do you guys have any questions or any questions not related to the frq or just like um, bio okay um then yeah that's basically it then um um, I'm going to, that's basically it for today's bio session, if you guys want, if you guys want to keep going, um, but yeah, um, I'll be here at the same time at 6 p.m. PST to go over units 4 through 6, which is a lot longer than units 1 through 3. Uh, so yeah, if you guys have any other questions, you can just like um, DM me or just like post it just peeing me or whatever, and then um, respond, or someone else will respond, but yeah. Um, I'm going to end. Yeah, I'm going to end the Thank voice. Oh, no problem. Oh <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Alright, uh, who's ready to die, gamers? Rest in peace, everybody. Yeah, me too. Gamers, let us unite. Yeah, this whole fucking thing is filled with sophomores. Yeah. I'm a senior. Really? Fuck me, dude. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got my cap and gown today, boys. sophomores in here? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sophomore. Oh my wow. god. Aw. Aw? What? Aww. Senior gang? Anyone? 2020 gang? Hey. Junior gang. Not gang, junior gang. Junior gang. Bro. Freshman. Yeah, what the, yeah, imagine taking this shit in sophomore year. Jesus Christ. Okay, 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 okay. 